In the upper half of the launch screen, this is where we find our projects area. From here, we can open an existing project that we've already created and we want to continue to work on. We can create brand new projects with the new command here. And below that, we have access to our three latest project templates. So we can create a new Revit project based on one of these three templates. And I'll cover Revit project templates later on in the course. Towards the center of the screen here, we have access to our four most recently opened Revit project files. So uh, quite a convenient tool if you've been working on a project, you come in the next day, fire up Revit, and you just click on one of these and go straight back to that project and continue uh, where you left off. Towards the center of the launch screen, this is where we find the families area. You may have come across the term Revit family. This is basically the components that go into a Revit project. They can be system families or component families. The families we're talking about here on the launch screen are specifically component families. That is, they are standalone files that can be created within Revit or downloaded from the internet. Typical examples of component families may be light fittings, radiators, light sockets, various pieces of furniture. So if, for example, you want to create your own Revit component, you can start Revit up, you come to the launch screen here, you can open a Revit family you've previously been working on, you can create a new family from here. And again, in the middle, we've got quick access with associated thumbnails to the last four Revit families you've been working on. Next, we're gonna take a look at the application menu. This can be found in the top left-hand corner of the application window, and Autodesk have chosen to put the uh, initial letter of the particular application uh, on the, the menu icon itself, so a big R for Revit here. So if we click on the R, we get the application menu. From here, we've got a, a fairly standard set of file commands. So again, we can start a new project. So remember, a Revit project file is what you use to hold your basic project information. So if you're designing a new house, a new school, new office, for example, you would create a Revit project to store all that information. We can create a new Revit family. Remember, Revit families are the basic building blocks or the components that are used in projects. Uh, both Revit LT and the full version of Revit contain a family uh, creation environment in which you can create your own custom components and we can create some other types of files here, conceptual mass for doing massing studies, a Revit title block, which we'll cover later on in the course, and annotation symbols. We can also open existing files that we've already created, so open a project we've been working on, a family, we've just talked about those being the custom components, any type of Revit file type there, building components, IFC files, so if you are collaborating with people on a BIM project who aren't using Revit, you can share your building information model in an IFC uh, file format. We can save projects from here. Uh, I haven't got a project open at the moment, hence that's greyed out. We've got save as, save our projects, our families, templates, which we'll cover later, and libraries. We can actually take uh, 2D detailed drafting views, for example, out of Revit and save those as a separate library. Export. We can share our building information model in a variety of file formats. So we can uh, create DWG files to open in AutoCAD, for example, Navisworks files, uh, and a host of other uh, file formats that you can see down there. Moving down, tucked away at the bottom of the application menu, we've got a little button there for options. If we open that, just take you on a, a 
quick tour around here. I'll come back to this later on in the course. Worth noting is this save reminder interval. Uh, I'll probably mention this again later on in the course, probably a few times to be on the safe side, but there is no auto save in Revit. The next best thing is that Revit will remind you to save and you can set here the duration between that auto reminder. So one of the first things to do when you install Revit, I would suggest is to go into this options menu and set that to quite a, a short duration. Uh, please do not set it to no reminders because you will never be reminded to save your project. And if something happens, you will lose everything you've done in, uh, since you last saved it. User interface, we'll cover this in more detail shortly, but the full version of Revit contains Revit architecture, Revit MEP and Revit structure. And you can turn on or off the bits of the interface that you're interested in, depending on what discipline um, you're working in. File locations, we can set here where Revit looks for the Revit template files. Again, more on Revit templates later, where it's uh, pulling the, the libraries from point cloud files. So the kind of things you're going to find in here in this, this options menu generally are the things that you're probably going to want to set once when you first install Revit and set it up and then forget about. Next we're going to take a look at the main menu. This can be found towards the top of the screen up here. It's going to run you through these main tabs. So Revit uh, utilizes what's called a ribbon system or ribbon menu. So you can see here when I click the architecture tab, I get presented with a number of panels. So this being a panel here, build, for example, and this particular panel contains individual tools. And we've got a circulation panel, a model panel and so forth. Moving along, we've got a structure menu. So everything to do with structural engineering can be found on here. Beams, columns, structural floors, trusses, braces, for example. Systems, this is where we find the mechanical and electrical tools. So the Revit MEP side of the software, all those tools can be located here. Insert, Revit can work with a variety of different file types. So we can link files in or we can import them. So we can link other Revit projects in. So if we're collaborating with other designers who are using Revit, we can bring their work into ours and use that as a template. We can bring IFC files in from other BIM software platforms. We can bring DWG and DXF files in so we can link CAD files in. And you can see there a host of, of file formats that we can work with. We'll look at that later on in the course and we will uh, take a DWG as an example. Um, so we'll bring a building survey in and look at how we can then utilize that in Revit. Annotate. Uh, a big part of your workflow in Revit um, when you're using it in practice will be detailing and annotating. You will produce a 3D model to a certain level of detail and at that point you will add 2D detail and annotations. So everything you need in order to do that is contained on the annotate menu and on the panels that that contains. Analyze. We can take our 3D virtual model that we've created and we can run different analysis on it. Um, so we can see its structural behavior, for example, uh, heating and cooling loads. So everything you need to analyze your design can be found on that menu. Massing and site. We can create uh, a context, a uh, topography for our building to sit on. So a topo surface there, we can add trees, parking spaces, and actually put a pad onto our topography for our building to sit on there. And we've got a number of tools to work with that topography. We can split it and merge it. Collaborate. See a big part of, of BIM and Revit is collaborating with others in a BIM environment. 
so we've got a suite of tools on this menu that allows us to interact with others who are using Revit um, through a process we call work sharing so we can activate the work sharing from within this menu set up work sets so I'll mention a little bit about that towards the end of the course view everything on this menu is about creating different views of your model be it 3d's sections callouts and later on in the course we'll look at all of these in detail and see exactly how we produce these different views manage these really are the the day-to-day -day settings in your project um, so we can define new materials we can set different snap options um, design options again we'll cover all these later on add-ins the full version of Revit allows you to expand its functionality by adding in plugins um, some of these are paid some of these are free these can be found in the app exchange and I'll show you where to find that shortly and finally modify we've got a suite of tools here that allow us to modify the elements that we've created and again shortly in the course I will walk you through how all these main modification tools work so we'll look at how to copy move split uh, extend items next we're going to take a look at the quick access toolbar so just above my cursor here we can see my quick access toolbar and this basically is just a method of activating the tools that you use most often uh, without having to go up to the uh, the main menu and the respective panels so they are not additional tools they are all tools that you could find buried in the main menu and on the panels but it's just a, a convenient way of activating the ones that you use most often you can have this quick access toolbar either below the main menu or if I hit that little triangle at the end and I look at this menu I've got show above the ribbon so if I click on that you can see now that the quick access toolbar has jumped up above the ribbon menu just pop that back down because that's where I prefer to have mine and you can customize this you can have whatever tools you find most convenient on there and to add a tool to the quick access toolbar it's very easy For example if I hit architecture and I right click on a tool I get the option add to quick access toolbar click on that and now it's put the wall tool onto the quick access toolbar near the top of the screen slightly to the right hand side we have the help menu so you can type in a keyword or phrase into this box here and as long as you are connected to the internet Revit will fire up a web browser and bring up uh, hopefully a relevant help page to, to help you with that particular problem I mentioned before about adding extra functionality with add-ins or plugins into into the full version of Revit please note Revit LT does not have the uh, ability to add plugins into it this is only for the full version of Revit uh, but if you are fortunate enough to be using full Revit you have access to the exchange apps there so we've got that little X icon again hitting that and being connected to the internet will open your web browser where you will go through to the exchange app store where you can browse a variety of free and paid plugins for Revit which you can just download and install directly and will then appear on that add-ins menu so worth spending some time just having a look through and to see what's available in there there's some quite useful plugins uh, many uh, useful free ones and obviously uh, a variety of really good paid premium plugins
And finally, on the right hand side of the launch screen, we have the resources area, which is basically just a series of hyperlinks to various uh, resources on the internet. So you've got a what's new link there. So every time a new version of Revit comes out, you can click on that and it will take you through to a resources page to explain what new features have been added. Again, a link to the, the help screen. Uh, Autodesk's own essential skills videos there to help you get started. Uh, a link to the exchange apps, which we talked about exactly the same as hitting the exchange apps icon at the top up there. And a link through to Rev the Revit community. So Autodesk's uh, own online forum. And finally at the bottom there, a quick get getting started video. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.